Hello and welcome to Ask a Web Geek. My name is CJ Gilbert and you're joining us for episode 36 of Ask a Web Geek. We've got a lot of great stuff in today's show, but first, our featured animal. It is this, make sure I say it right, it is a green sea turtle. All right, so mixing my metaphors today, I know that we're in the web jungle and this is clearly an underwater animal. And yet, we have animals of all kinds in our jungle. We have animals that belong in the jungle natively, and we have folks that do not feel like they fit in this jungle, and they feel like a fish out of water, so to speak. Our featured animal today is gonna be the uh, sea turtle, the green sea turtle. And you know what, have you seen this? There's a, there's a particular movie by a particular uh, you know, company that does a lot of movies for kids. And they have a real popular movie involving some fish that get lost, and there's a whole thing about them looking for this fish. And I don't necessarily want to say the company or the or the name if that's a problem at all. I don't think it is. But anyway, they're finding this they're finding an orange fish. Have you seen this movie? Find an orange fish? And in that movie there's a really cool dude kind of actor, dude, whoa, dude, kind of a sea turtle, and he always makes me laugh, and in the movie, he's he's flying on the slipstream, and all of his little friends, he's like the teacher animal, and all of the other little animals jump onto his back, and they swim along the stream, uh, the the, the jet stream. I'm, I'm not getting the words right, but hopefully you're following with, with me today. So here's the metaphor. Are you ready for it? I'll be your big dude sea turtle this week. Jump on my back. We're going to jump on the slipstream and maneuver our ways through this watery web jungle this week. So let me know. Let me know how we can help you. Climb on my back and we'll go extra fast together. I don't know if that's a great metaphor or not, but we, we went with it. So anyway, there's our featured animal of the week. Thank you so much, green sea turtle. So this week, maybe you're just riding a wave. Maybe you need to climb on someone's back and lead your way through the jungle. Man, I'm gonna mix metaphors, but that's what we're here to do is help you get through this jungle that is your internet life, so to speak. All right, let's go ahead and jump over into our slide presentation. I'm gonna pull off my hat. Ask a web geek. My name is CJ Gilbert and I'm your web safari guide. What would you like to ask a web geek? This is the show where you can ask any questions you have on websites, email campaigns, social media marketing, and more. We focus on your website. That's my business. I build websites and I focus on using people's websites to improve their business. Guess what? We want to improve your website, but we want to improve your whole business. And I believe that your website is your number one tool to help you grow and support your business. So I've focused on your website, but the secret is I've actually focused on improving and enhancing every aspect of your business. You see, I realize that as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you're looking for tools that will help you attract more customers, make more sales, enhance your customer service, increase your efficiency, save time, save money, and serve your clients better, faster, and easier. Well, I'm here to help you do those things, and I want to focus on your website, but there's a lot of other tools and technology that's out there to help us, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Congratulations. Let me begin by saying congratulations. I know that you're with me today. I know that you're listening to my voice because you want to improve your business, and you're taking the steps to do so. So allow me to say good for you. You're in the right place at the right time. I'm glad you're here. You're going to be glad you're here. You're going to learn something really cool today. So just be on the lookout for it. Ask a Web Geek. We're on all of these places. Let me tell you real quickly how it works. Join our Facebook group, Ask a Web Geek, on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. I go live into our Facebook group. We have a little chat. We joke. We say some stupid, funny things. And then at some point, we start the live taping of our show. I love to do it live. I could just film the show by myself, but I prefer to do it here live on Facebook so that I can have some audience, I can have some comments, I can have some questions as it goes forward. So that's just how we do it. And then I also want you to subscribe on YouTube because a couple days after I do the live, I take the recording 
recording. I slice and dice it. I edit out some of the nonsense. I add a little music and we produce it into a show. That show then goes to YouTube. It goes to our website and it becomes a podcast. So I'd love for you to subscribe on YouTube. You'll be notified immediately when that video goes live on Saturday or Sunday, usually. And it'll also come out as a podcast. Please subscribe as a podcast on your favorite podcast player. Yes, we're on we're on Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Let me know what other platform you might prefer. Let me know if it is not there. But if you if you're an Apple user, would you please subscribe on Apple Podcasts? That would help the show the most, as well as leaving me a, a five star rating and tell a friend. Really appreciate that. We're also on Twitter. You can you can follow along on, on Twitter. Ask a web geek. Feel free to tweet along with the show. Let me know what episode you're listening to, what made you laugh, what questions you still have, and we're here to help you move forward. Disclaimer, you must be willing to have your question or issue addressed in a public forum. As I mentioned, this show is publicly available. We will do our best to obscure anything you need us to. Password fields are always hidden. If we're jumping into the back end of your websites like that live on a show, we'll we'll hide whatever you need us to hide. We'll do certain things off screen and then pull it on screen to, to share. So just let me know if that's any kind of a concern. Otherwise, I just believe all the questions that people ask me are totally okay for me to answer, discuss, and demonstrate right here on the show. This is not legal or professional advice. I'm a web geek with over 20 years of experience in websites and computers and internet and technology, but I'm not a CPA and I'm not an attorney and you need to consult those professional licensed certified business people in your life when you make any changes to your business because of course you accept responsibility for everything, including your own success. So who am I? I'm CJ Gilbert. I'm the web geek, and I have been a web developer for over 20 years now. Uh, I, I, you know, it's I had a funny journey, which which I'll invite you to my free video workshop. I'll tell you more about that in that in that video series. But it was a whole series of events that took me through some customer service jobs, took me through some sales jobs before I ended up opening my own company and learning what it was like to be an entrepreneur, to be a small business owner, while you also had to focus on serving your clients. So I came along at some point to create a book. I didn't intend to become an author when I sat down to do this. I just was writing out some thoughts, ended up writing this book on what a website should do for a business. And now I'm grateful to be a speaker and an author and a teacher in addition to a website designer. I've worked with so many amazing people. Uh, one of my uh, sales mentors here in the center, Eric Lofholm, uh, learned so much from him uh, over the years and still study him. Uh, and many other people in business, many other mentors that should be mentioned. I'm also a musician. I play the piano. I love to play the piano. And I have shared some of that uh, recently on, on a couple experimental shows. I'm also a father. I'm married. I have three kids. We live in La Mesa, San Diego. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be a work-at-home dad and from my own home office still be able to help you and what's even more than that is my philosophy. You see, I believe that my business is to serve your business. You're in business because you have a gift, a talent, a message that you are here to share with, with the people that you share it with. And I see myself as like a magnifying glass or a megaphone. My work will enhance and magnify your work. And that's my true intention. Yes, I recognize that you potentially or the person you refer to me is my direct client, but I really understand that more than that, your clients are my clients. So I see it as, a, as an even deeper level. What can I do with my work to magnify your work so you can reach even more people. My job is to make is to help you do more business and to do better business. And with the two of us collaborating like that, we can reach millions. We can affect millions of lives with all the people in my network all working together. It's a it's a really powerful thing. Be on the lookout for your golden nugget. You know, our minds are so interesting. You're going to learn something new each time you read my book, you hear me speak, you watch my videos, you buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, every, all you have to do is look for it. Even if you watch the same video over and over, especially if you watch 
the same video over and over. My uh, sales and encouragement mentor, Eric Lofholm, I was just mentioning, he encourages us to watch his videos seven times. Listen to the messages seven times because your brain absorbs and understands things on a deeper level every time. So all you have to do today is just be aware that you could receive a golden nugget if you're just open to doing so. Grab a piece of paper. I like to draw a line right down the middle, label the left side notes, the right side actions. That way I can take my stream of consciousness notes the whole time down the left side. And then the right side, that space is reserved for action steps. The things that you're going to hear that really jump out that you're like, oh, I want to take quick action on that. Put that in the right hand column so you can find it really easily and make sure to star your golden nuggets. All right, let's let me introduce you to our sponsors today. Our first sponsor today is Employee Escape Plan, the ultimate step-by-step -step mentoring program for creating your dream job through entrepreneurship. For more information, visit EmployeeEscapePlan.com. I want to give a shout out here to Joe Nicasio, who created this company to help those folks who feel trapped in their nine to five job. They're trapped. They're not fulfilled. They're not happy They're They have a job. They're happy. They have a job, but they're just not happy with doing what they're doing. They feel there's something more. They feel they could be contributing to the world in a bigger and better way, but they don't know what to do. I want to introduce you to Joe Nicasio and the Employee Escape Plan. This is the program that you can go through, an ultimate step-by-step -step mentoring program for creating your dream job through entrepreneurship, learning to escape that nine to five, and helping even more folks than you could possibly imagine. So, so big thanks to Joe Nicasio. Check out my beautiful mug right here. Joe is one of our mug sponsors, sent me this mug, and boom, he is now a sponsor of the show, EmployeeEscapePlan.com. Check it out. I want to encourage you to start your day right. I mentioned a couple of times a few seconds ago, Eric Lofholm, that's this handsome gentleman right up here in the right-hand corner. No, not me with the book. Yeah, I'm okay too. But this guy right up here, Eric Lofholm, he does a free 15-minute call every day. And since I started the podcast, it's turned into a Facebook Live as well. So I would encourage you, take 15 minutes out of your day every day to put yourself into the mindset of success. This is a live call that's at 745 every morning. It's it's a phone call, which I actually pick up the phone and dial into, but it's also a Facebook Live. You could, you could tune into it live. It also becomes a podcast. It also goes to YouTube, and I'm either on that call live every day or I listen to it every day by the recording. It is absolutely amazing. It's the one of the best things I do to put myself in the mindset of success and continue to study the principles that help me move forward in my business and in my life. And I believe I've seen a tremendous amount of results from focusing on these simple principles that help keep me in action and help keep me moving forward. I should tell you how to get there. You can learn more at this special link I made for you, amcall.gilbertstudios.com. That's AM like the morning time, like it's 9 AM, it's 10 AM. amcall.gilbertstudios.com. Dot com. Check that out. Thank you so much, Eric, for putting this out, as well as all the amazing uh, work and resources that you put out every single day. And if you haven't already, do check out my free video workshop. It's at my website, safari.com. You'll hear a little bit about my story and how I fell out of the insurance industry. And you'll learn how I became an entrepreneur and how I realized that my business was here to serve other entrepreneurs and my, my whole story around that. And then the main purpose of this workshop is that you learn how to make your website work for your business. It's not just a pretty business card, or at least it doesn't have to be if you know that it's a powerful tool for your business. And this is where you'll find some great ideas on how to do that. Nothing technical, nothing over anybody's head. My website, safari.com, will teach you key principles that any business owner and entrepreneur can use in their own website and their own business. My website, safari.com. Buckle up, stay hydrated. I'm going to take a sip of water and a sip of coffee from my employee escape plan mug, and then we're going to jump right into the show.
I guess we're already in the show. We're going to continue the show. We're going to jump right into the show. We're already doing the show. None of those words made sense. We're going to continue the show. It is the featured topic of the week, and it is my absolute pleasure to say we have our guest geek back in the house with us today. It's Janae Spry, and she is back with another amazing productivity tip. If you've missed it before, she's come to us before with two amazing sets of tips that help you create your uh, your your goals and align your calendar to make sure that you're actually getting things done in your business. Well, she's back again today with another fantastic tip. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Janae Spry. Hey, everybody. What is up? Janae Spry, productivity expert and growth strategist and your host of this Doer Entrepreneurs Community. So today we're talking about how to avoid scheduling traps that kill your productivity. So these are really, really important and they're also extremely common and I coach people and consult with people all the time that make these mistakes. So I am here to help you not make them. Um, one of the ways you can do that is by analyzing how you're scheduling and how you're doing things. And I had provided that planner that I provided last time right up top so you can link that, um, grab that planner, um, and that will help you throughout this presentation as well. I've also linked the previous video in case you would like to watch that, but it's totally not necessary. So let's jump right in. Um, so the very first thing that you might not be aware of uh, is that the first trap is missing out on peak energy and focus time. So in other words, it's extremely important to be aware of your energy levels and then any time you're at peak focus. So um, what that means is, for example, I'll take myself. I am not a morning person, guys, not at all. If anybody here knows me really well personally, you know that that is true. Um, I hit my peak focus around 10 a.m. So oftentimes I spend from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. or so like researching, absorbing, um, and taking care of things, which then allow me to like really execute, create, strategize between about 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. So I get three amazingly productive hours in that time to work on my business and not just in my business, which is really, really important to me. Um, so does this mean that I live in a world where this is true every single weekday and I never have a bad day or I'm always able to schedule the perfect task for the perfect time and I always have 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. available, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not a unicorn. And I was just listening to a podcast the other day where this guy was like, I'm so tired of these productivity gurus or acting like they're, you know, working like one hour a day or whatever. And nothing ever goes wrong and the guy had kids and so he was like let me tell you what if you have kids like <laughs> things go wrong all the time and i'm here to tell you that i don't have kids but <laughs> i do have insomnia i have anxiety of all kinds of fun things that sometimes just let me know that that day is not going to go as planned but having a strategy that allows you to move things around so that you can really do the best you can every single time with what you have um, that's really what is key. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, scheduling according to gurus on that note. So scheduling things when you think you should do them instead of when it works best for you. So I'm going to give you another example. And, you know, I don't want to harp on the morning person thing, but a lot of productivity gurus harp on waking up at like 5 a.m. And, you know, that's great if that works for you. Like if you're a morning person, if you can get that to work for you, awesome. And I really find that it's actually better to focus on self-awareness than to try to mold yourself into what works for someone else. You could think about this as the equivalent of a fad diet, except for productivity. So, you know, you might get yourself to do this for a week, maybe a month, hell, maybe even longer. But the reality is that it's really unlikely that you're going to stick to it forever because it just isn't you. So focus um, intensely on self-awareness and you will squeeze out a lot more productivity out of yourself than by trying to force yourself to wake up at 5 a.m. when you prefer to be in bed until 10. Like that is not a recipe for success. Um, another example, I have a friend of mine that is extremely productive and he also has kids at home and he actually sleeps in two shifts, which is like against all 
like expert anything talking about sleep. Um, but that's what works for him. And it lets him spend time with his kids. And he also says this allows him to be really productive and also produce quality work. So, you know, it's always weird when I get emails from him in the middle of the night and the middle of the day, but that works for him. And he's self-aware enough to know that that is true. It works for him. It works for his clients. Um, the best thing to do is just be constantly asking yourself what went right, what went wrong, and how can I make it better? And again, I linked that planner above and you will notice those questions are in that planner as well to help you every single week. And remember, progress, not perfection. Right, guys? So the other thing that's really important to realize is that it's important to not schedule around your clients, okay? So I know that a lot of people are like, um, that's kind of what I do. And they might even feel like that's the right thing to do, but it's not. <laughs> so some examples of what that looks like would be checking your email every few minutes, having notifications and sound on, even on your email, maybe on your phone, so your clients can reach you at all times. They can interrupt you. So when you let other people control your time at all times like that, it's extremely difficult. You know what, I'm gonna say impossible to be productive. So if you think about, as an example, really big companies and corporations and how they operate, Guys, there's a reason that they're able to do what they do at such a large scale, and it's because they create workflows and systems and their clients follow those systems instead of the other way around. So I'm not going to suggest that you add like a press one for invoicing type menu to your voicemail. Please don't do that. Those are so annoying. <laughs> but it's really important to train your clients on your systems and your workflows if you don't want people expecting email responses from you after 5 p.m., stop responding to email after 5 p.m. If you feel like email at, emailing after then, because that's what works for you that day, you can always schedule your emails to be sent during business hours so that you're not training your clients to contact you 24 seven or expect that type of response. When other people control your time, other people control your time. <laughs> other people control your productivity and let me promise you, they do not care about your productivity the way you do. They care about theirs. So if you answer your phone all day and at any time of day and that's how you are um, and that's your most responsive from your client's perspective, guess what they're going to do? They're going to call you every time they have a question. Every time they have one question really quick, they're going to be like, oh, she's definitely going to answer. He's definitely going to answer. And they'll definitely answer my question. And it'll be, you know, that's easiest for me. So they might feel like this is great customer service and in a way it is because you're headed straight for working 24 seven or, um, and you know, the thing is though, it's a recipe for just straight out burnout. Okay. And it might work in the beginning when you have like two clients or something, you know, when you're building your business, but when you get so busy, you're going to turn around and be like, how did this happen? Well, this is how that happens. So, you know, as a consultant, I used to get a lot of those like quick question um, phone calls or emails or texts or whatever, but I changed my process. So I let them know in the beginning that my time is billable in 15 minute increments. And that means that it's best for the client to group together their questions, um, their comments, their issues so that they pay me less, right? That way it's not split up into 15 minutes to answer each question separately, right? That they feel like that would be crazy, so they're gonna combine them. And that allows me also to batch my time into the time bl blocks you saw in the last video. And again, that video is linked above if you'd like to watch that. If I was answering quick question emails and calls all day, that would be it. That's all I would ever do. I would never do anything else. And most importantly, I would not be serving my clients as well as I could. Okay, so that's really, really important. So they would be distracting me constantly. I would not be able to do my best work. And the truth is that if a client has a lot of quick questions, they're often served better by setting up a meeting at that point rather than going back and forth 20 times over email. They're going to be better served that way. So think about your workflow. So what works best for you and how can you set your schedule up to serve your clients or work in your business most effectively so that you also have time to work on your business? Because that's really what is so freaking key here, guys. Um, okay, so speaking of training your clients, <laughs> 
The other scheduling trap is not training your clients to conform to your schedule or having a clear workflow for them. And trust me, even as the client side, it can be just as frustrating to be the client of a disorganized entrepreneur as it is to be the disorganized entrepreneur, okay? It's extremely frustrating. I've been on both sides of this and it's terrible. I mean, it, it just, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. So in particular, I really see a lot of solopreneurs um, who, for example, will even say they get so upset, clients are contacting them in the evenings, on weekends, but then if I ask them, you know, what do you do when they call? And inevitably the person's like, well, you know, I respond because I don't wanna lose that client. And again, a lot of this is from when they first started and they're having those like mental images of back when they only had two clients or whatever it is. But what you're doing is you are literally saying, hey, feel free to call me anytime, day or night, because I will absolutely happily respond to you. The way to stop this, guys, is to stop responding at these times. So if you're already in this situation, this is how you fix it. If you're not in this situation, this is how you prevent it from happening. It is not your client's responsibility to contact you only during your working hours, okay? We can't put that on our customers. And if you work across time zones, this is even more important because no one's gonna check your time zone. So you have to build clear layers for your customers so they know exactly how to contact you and it's not complicated, it's very easy for them, and they know how to get the best out of you, basically. So um, as an example, I'll give you my setup. Layer one for me is email. If you don't get me by email and you feel like it's more urgent, my phone number is in my signature so you can call me. Um, if I don't answer, which I leave my phone on silent, so that's very likely that I won't answer, my voicemail actually says to text me for the fastest response. And that allows me to quickly check a text at a regular interim when I'm already planning to check my phone. So my phone doesn't ding and tell me there's a text message, but I do check it regularly throughout the day to make sure if there's something urgent that I can take care of it. But I can quickly see, is it really urgent? or not, and then I can I can reply appropriately. Um, and if I need more context, I can go grab that email, right? So let me also tell you guys, if you've ever hired someone and they've been all over the place, they probably have fallen into one or all of the traps that we've talked about today. And as the client, it is really insanely frustrating to deal with someone um, who is like this when you are trying to get things done, okay? So when you don't have a workflow that's clear for your customers and your clients in any business, all it does is create additional stress for your customer too, okay? So you're not doing anybody any favors. So you might think that the best customer service is responding to any client requests at any time of day, but in the end, I promise you what it's gonna do is it's gonna make you both crazy. <laughs> um, so just to recap, um, we have, these um, are the scheduling traps. And do not forget, by the way, to grab that planner above because that's gonna help you with your self-awareness, help you with your evaluation as you're tweaking things to get the absolute most out of your time. So um, our scheduling traps that I wanna talk about today, I mean, of course there are more, but missing out on peak energy and focus times, scheduling according to gurus, listening to those, I have to wake up at 5 a.m., I, I can only work out at 6 a.m., whatever, and then scheduling around your clients, um, stopping everything you're doing every single time a client calls, and not training your clients properly. So sort of creating an environment where it's just very frustrating and very confusing for everyone. So thank you guys for hanging out with me uh, for this Top Tip Tuesday video. Uh, it will be pinned the entire week and you are more than welcome to drop your workbook below, drop questions below, whatever you would like, and I will help you out. Thanks guys. Janae, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. I'm, I, I absolutely was blown away when I saw that video and I wanted to share it with our audience. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. I wanna encourage you to check out her Facebook group. It's Doer Entrepreneurs and you can find them on Facebook at Doer Entrepreneurs. I did make a shortcut link for you. It's P-A-I-D-E 
www.gilbertstudios.com. It's like paid with an extra E at the end. It stands for Productive and Independent Doer Entrepreneurs. P-A-I-D-E dot gilbertstudios.com. That'll jump you right over to her group where you can jump in and and I encourage you to join her group. A lot of great productivity uh, tips as well as tips and experts of all different kinds, including this guy, including this web geek, has shared a couple thoughts as well. Thank you so much, Janae. Really appreciate your, your input um, into our show and for our community and in our group. If Do you need any more help? I'm available for private coaching. We can do it just like this over our computer through Zoom or through one of the amazing channels. I'm available by the hour or by the quarter hour. If you need private help, private coaching, I can help you move forward this week. Just give me a call or send me a text, 619-512-3210. You can also email cj at askawebgeek.com, 619-512-3210 to text, call, or email cj at askawebgeek.com. Dot com. You can let me know what your question is, if you want it answered in an upcoming show, or if you want private coaching, that's available for you as well. And don't miss, we're continuing our virtual business networking every Thursday and Friday. We're having a great time. We're getting 30 to 50 people showing up every time to participate in this virtual business networking. I open up the doors at 1130 and we have a, a general chat, a general hangout. I help people with their technology and we've got some open networking available with the breakout rooms. And then at noon, we begin our structured agenda. We have a one hour agenda. Everyone gets a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, we go around the room. Everyone has 30 seconds to introduce themselves. Then we usually have a featured speaker as well as some networking education, some more information and resources that we present to everyone. It's a really great time. We end promptly at one. If you need to rush away to any other meetings, you can do that. And then we've done another half hour, at least at that point, of open networking. We open up the breakout rooms again. You can pair off with people that you're interested in speaking with or hang out in the main room. It's totally up to you. But but this is an amazing time of networking that we've been so fortunate to continue during this time via Zoom. Here's all the information on the screen in front of you. And if you're not looking at the screen in front of you, you can go there. You can just go to my blog, gilbertstudios.com slash blog. You'll find an article that I have there uh, with all the information. Or you can go directly to meetup.com and search exceptional entrepreneurs. And you'll find their page, meetup.com slash exceptional entrepreneurs. And uh, you'll get all the details there. It's now time to ask a web geek. We've got a great question coming up for you today. Let me review what we did last time on the show. The very last show, episode 35, we had our guest geek with us, Janae Spry. And I, I'm referring to what she did in that show as hacking time. So, so check out what she did to hack her time. Um, in episode 35. And then we answered the question, uh-oh, what happened when my WordPress website got hacked? What do we do? So refer back to episode 35 to learn about hacking time and recovering from a hacked WordPress website. In episode 34, I took you on a little tour of my my website, safari.com, and talked about how to make your website work for you. And I, I took you through those seven videos uh, those seven topics real fast just to let you know what was coming up in that show, what you're going to get in that series, and how it's going to help grow your business. In episode 33, I gave away two free social media training videos that I had created. The first one is an intro to social media. It's about 20 minutes long. And then the second one is a, a deep dive into LinkedIn. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. It opens with the same key concepts of social media in general, but then it jumps very deep into LinkedIn talking about how to set up your profile, some uh, best practices, some suggestions, as well as how to use the advanced search tool that's built right into LinkedIn, which allows you to look into your network and into your network's network, which is a really cool feature. Check those out. Th those are available for you in episode 33. And then in episode 32, we did what I call a website jungle tour. And in the 
previous couple shows, I'd been talking about the different kinds of websites that we can build. So in episode 32, I took you on a tour of some of some of the websites that we've built and explained and kind of talked through which kind of website those are. What we discovered along the way is you can't tell necessarily from the front end how big or complicated or whatever a website can be. Basically, from the front end, all websites can look the same because what you see on the front end with those pictures and graphics does not reveal what's possible, what's behind the scenes or not. If there's anything behind the scenes or if there's a powerful machine back there ready to do some e-commerce or handle a transaction or uh, allow a member to get to a special member area, we talked through all of that in episode 32. But today, oh, well, we're not there yet. <laughs> Join our conversations in our Facebook group. We always have some good conversations going on. We're looking for your suggestions on books and resources, on offline techniques, guerrilla marketing techniques. You'll find this conversation there in our group, Ask a Web Geek. Please jump into our conversations. Let us know what your thoughts are. One of our newest questions on the board is, what should I consider when buying a domain name? What should I consider? And I would invite you to come to our Facebook group and chime in on that thought that Jessica's asking, what should I consider when I look to buy a domain name? Here we are. Uh, here is our question of the week. CJ, why doesn't my website show up on Google? What do I do? Well, let me give you a little background real quick. First of all, this question came from a gal who just launched her website like brand new, and then she was looking for it to appear on Google. She's like, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. What do I do? Well, the first thing is you have to be a little patient because Google looks at every website across the entire planet and memorizes all of them and then decides with its ranking features how to rank each one of those websites. There's hundreds of criteria in that formula, and we don't really know what that exact formula is. We know what some of the things are. We know uh, we have great ideas of do these things and you'll get a better ranking than not, um, but we don't know the exact formula. But we can give you some general ideas and some general tips. On today's show, I'm going to tell you some very specific specific things that you can do to make sure that your website and your business is registered with Google, which gives you an additional chance to get listed on Google. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So do keep in mind when you have a brand new website, it does take a little bit of time to get it to move up into that ranking. And yet there are some things we can do to help. So the first question I have, when, when she asks me, why doesn't my website show up on Google? My question right back to her is, for what? For what search terms exactly? For your business name specifically, or are you looking for some general keywords? Because my answer is gonna be different and your results are gonna be different. For example, are you looking for, I'm just gonna use my own name as an example. Are you looking for Gilbert Studios website design? If you type in Gilbert Studios or you type in Gilbert Studios website design, I better be one of the very top search results. I hope number one, but I better at least be in the top three of those search results if you're looking specifically for me, Gilbert Studios. Now, if you search just my keywords, website design, that's a huge like planet of search results, right? I bet if you search web des website design, I will not show up in the top 10. I might not even be on the first three pages unless you give Google some more criteria. If you say website design San Diego or, or San Diego website design, that made your search smaller. If you can imagine this one's website design, I don't know if I'll ever be found for that. If you do San Diego website design, now your search is only this big I might have a better chance of showing up in there. I might be in the top 10 of that one. I certainly going to be on the first three pages. And then if you search La Mesa website design or web design in La Mesa, 
I will definitely be on that search result because, because now you're looking for a criteria that's only this big and I better show up in that search result query. So do you see the difference between your business name versus your keywords? And even when you're searching keywords, there's a very broad search term and then more narrow and then more narrow. So those are all things to consider. Today though, we are just talking about the business name piece there. I'm, I'm looking for my website by my own name, my own business name. It should pop up because I'm looking for it by name, not just by keyword. That takes more work, that takes more energy, that takes more money and investment. But for my name, certainly I should be showing up for that, right? Absolutely. Here's a couple things that you want to do right off the bat to make sure that that happens as quickly as possible. Number one, Google's search console. This used to be called the Google Webmaster Tool, and they don't call it that anymore. They now call it the Search Console. So if you go to Google and type in Search Console, Google will bring you right here to this page and invite you to open up an account with your Google Search Console. Now you can log right into this with your Gmail address, your Google account if you already have one. If you do not have a Gmail account or a Google account, you can create one totally for free so that you can use this tool. When you do this, when you use this tool and it's going to ask you for your website and it's going to ask you to verify that you do own that website and there's a couple different ways that it's going to have you do that. Once you've done all those steps, you will then have a console. This is what it looks like right now on mine, gilbertstudios.com. It's just showing you the clicks. It tells you if you have any uh, errors on your pages. This is telling me I have 54 valid pages and there are no errors on them right now. And this is telling me I'm getting certain number of clicks per day, per whatever, whatever. This is just one of the tools that we use, but this is what I'm going to call step one, because this says to Google, hey, Google, I have a website and you should list it and you should know about it. So this is the first thing that you do. It's the search console, Google search console, register your website there. That's step one. That tells Google you exist as a website and there they will then come and index your site and they will then index, by the way, is the magic word when the when the Google spider, uh, that's what they call it. When the Google spider, which is the robot, comes to your website, it crawls through every page, it memorizes every word on every page. That's known as indexing your page. Once your website has been indexed, you can now appear in the Google search results. Will you? I don't know. Where will you appear? I don't know. But this is what now actually gives you the chance to appear. Let Google know you exist. That's the first step. So this is going to be ex basically how you register your website, your new website with Google. You can do this with an old website. Make sure your website is registered in Google Search Console. I do this for all my clients. If you're one of my clients, I've already done this for you. Step number two. Google my business. So the first thing was specifically related to your website. This one is related to your whole business. This is the way that you get your business on the map, so to speak, and literally and figuratively. Google my business is the place that you will go to create a business listing, a directory listing for your business on Google. You can think of this as Google's yellow pages. It's part of their Google Maps. This has been called so many things over the last 10 years. It used to be called Google Maps, Google Locations, Google Places, and these things kind of change uh, over time. Today it's called Google My Business. So again, another thing that you can do to register yourself with Google as a legitimate business so that you have even one more factor of being found for the name of your business. Google my business. This is the place to create that listing. Once you've done that, here's what mine looks like. You'll inside the dashboard, you know, you have to, again, there's another process. You have to verify it. Often they're going to mail you a postcard to make sure that that actually exists at your address. And then they send you a number and then you put it in. There's a little bit of a process to verify yourself, but this is going to create that listing for you in two places. Number one on Google maps, that's your official directory listing for your business. 
Even if you don't have a physical location for your business, you can still register yourself with Google and then choose to hide your address. That's okay. You can create a service area. Maybe you serve San Diego or you serve La Mesa or you serve, you know, whatever. You can create that inside of this inside of this listing, what you serve, where you serve. What was I going to say? This puts you on the map. That's the first thing. But what's the other thing I was going to say? Ah, yes. The, uh, the knowledge card. Have you ever done a search on Google and over here in the normal area, it shows, there's a couple things that's going to show you, right? Let me give you the quick tour. Do a search for anything on Google. Let me, um, let me pull it over here. Do a search for anything on Google and you're going to find it. You're going to find the search results, uh, always look a couple ways on the left side of the screen. It shows you the results and it shows you right at the top advertising. Number one, it shows you map listings, number two, and then it shows you the organic listings. Now it's our number one goal to get you to show up in the organic listings area. That's what we really want to have happen. That's the best thing possible. Then in the other column, the right hand column, if there's no real hits on this, that'll be blank. But if you do a search for your business, do this as an experiment, search for Gilbert Studios website design, because what should happen is my knowledge card should pop up in that right hand column. And that basically is the same listing that I was just showing you right here. This listing right here pops up in that right hand column and it's Google saying to you, hey, are you looking for Gilbert Studios website design? Because that's a business we know about. Here's their information. Here's their photos, address, on the map, website, phone number, photos, and on and on and on. And all of that comes from this page right here. So you want to create your Google My Business. It puts you on the map, but it also shows your knowledge card when all the things line up. When someone puts in their search terms, I kind of, I'm in my mind, I'm picturing it like that jet, like you're pulling the lever on the, what's that, what's the machine called in the casino where you put the coin in and you pull the lever, a slot machine. It's like you're pulling the, the it's like you're pulling the lever on the slot machine and it goes ding, 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 and the wheels line up and the ding, 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 ding. So when you're doing your search terms and you're pulling that lever and the things are spinning, when they all line up, boom, and you hit the jackpot, that's when it shows this knowledge card. Man, my metaphors are all over the place today, but hopefully you're following me. Hopefully you're following me in the jungle today. Well, let me know if you have any questions on that. All right. So step one is we went to the search console to register your website. Then we went to Google My Business to register your business, which guess what? Also has a link back to your website. And you better believe Google will know that and recognize that. The more better links you can get to your website. What I mean is you don't want to just get any old links to your website. You want to have good links to your website. You want to have links to your website from reputable other websites. So having a link to your website from Google's map listing themselves, that's a good one. So search console and then Google my business. Are you following? And then the third step after that is what comes after that? Well, the next thing that you want to do is build content. You want to build up your content on your website. And this is going to be the thing you do over time. So those first two steps, you're going to do those immediately after launching your website right away in the first five minutes, do both of those things. And then this is the thing that you're going to want to do over the next couple weeks to months to years of your business adding content, building content onto your website. And I'm showing you this slide right here because I want to reference this episode of the show, episode 13. I did a great show on, we call it Lost in the SEO Jungle. Episode 13, Lost in the SEO Jungle. I'm going to have a link right to that in the show notes. So you can click right on that or you can just go to the website and find your way over to episode 13. In episode 13, Lost in the SEO Jungle, I talk about how search engine optimization is the process of making your website more appealing to the search engines so that they list you and rank you higher in the search engines results. And one of the ways that we do that is by building content on your website. And I know a lot of people are like, man, I don't have a time to do 
more stuff. I don't have time to do anything else. I don't have time to do all these other hundred things, CJ, and blogging and social media and email campaigns. And I'm already so tired and I'm already so busy in my business. I get that. But what if instead of giving you a hundred more things to do, what if we could just look at what you're already doing now and turn it into a hundred things that we could do for your business. We could turn it into blogs. We could turn it into email posts. We could turn it into social media posts. What, what are you already doing that we could then turn into all these other pieces and resources for you? That's what I talk about in this episode right here, episode 13. I talk about how to take an hour or maybe two hours, take a Saturday and with with this strategy, with what with what I say in this video, you can create four blog posts, four email blasts, and eight social media posts. You can essentially plot out an entire month of blogs, emails, and social media in one day, in one sit down, in on one Saturday. And I tell you exactly how to do that in episode thirteen. Check that out. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know what questions you have about that. Let me know what questions you have about any of those three steps. And let me know if you have any questions about anything else in your web jungle. This is the show. This is the place where I want you to feel free to ask any questions you have on websites, marketing, social media, any other tools, something that I've said before. Don't be afraid to ask a question if you think, well, maybe he's covered that before and I just don't know the shows well enough. I don't care. Ask me anyway. If, if it's something that we've covered, I'm going to send you a link and be like, yep, here's your answer. Boom. If we haven't covered it, we will. So don't be afraid to ask any questions. There's no such, there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to website design. If you're thinking of it, someone else is thinking of it. If you're struggling with a tool or piece of technology, a hundred other people are struggling with the exact same thing. So swallow your pride and just ask me for help because that's what I'm here to do. My name is CJ Gilbert. My show is Ask a Web Geek. I'm so glad that you've been with me today. I want to thank our sponsors one more time and encourage you to check out their websites. It's Employee Escape Plan, the ultimate step-by-step -step mentoring program for creating your dream job through entrepreneurship. For more information, visit Employee Escape Plan and learn how Joe Nicasio is helping people escape their nine to five and 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 find themselves reborn in the world of entrepreneurship. Start your day right every day by getting fired up. Take 15 minutes to put yourself into the mindset of success. Get all the details at amcall.gilbertstudios.com. That's AM like the morning, like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., amcall.gilbertstudios.com. And if you haven't yet, do check out my free video workshop. It's the five keys to unlock the profit hidden in your website. And you can find it at mywebsitesafari.com. And chances are there's a link to it right underneath this video. Mywebsitesafari.com. All the links and details are over at askawebgeek.com. That's where you can find all the shows. You can find the links to the Facebook, to the Twitter, to the YouTube, to the podcast, to all the places there on askawebgeek.com. Thank you so much for your time and attention this morning. I hope you have an amazing, amazing week this week. It is, it's a Wednesday. I invite you to have a happy Wednesday. I'm going to throw on the, the web safari hat one more time so I can officially let you know that I'm so pleased that you're with me today. And I understand. I understand what it's like. You may think that the web geek wouldn't understand. Well, this web geek does. I totally understand what it's like to be lost in the jungle, to feel like you're not getting where you want to go, to feel like you've sunk your time, your energy, your money, your resources into your websites, into your social media, into these other pieces, and you just feel like it's not paying off. And you're frustrated, and you feel anxiety, and you're just not getting what you want out of it. Well, man, I understand because the internet is a jungle. It's so easy to get lost and to find yourself going down the wrong path or find yourself stuck in the quicksand or a hidden trap you didn't even see coming. I advise you to join up with a tribe of people. This community is available for you. Hire a well-trained guide like myself that can lead you through the jungle and get you where you want to go. 
My name is CJ Gilbert. You've been joining us for Ask a Web Geek. Let me know how I can support you this week. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you have a question. Come right to our Facebook page, make a uh, Facebook group, make a brand new post and ask me your question and we'll talk about it next week. My name is CJ Gilbert and on behalf of Ask a Web Geek and Gilbert Studios, I want you to have a wonderful week. Have a happy Wednesday. Have a wonderful website Wednesday. A great week. And we'll see you next week in the web jungle. Bye-bye for now. God bless. And what that means, what that allowed me to do is create a custom YouTube URL. So our, our official YouTube channel name is now youtube.com slash Ask a web geek, and I'm so thrilled that that is true. Putting a little uh, peppermint essential oil here on the back of my neck uh, right now. Peppermint essential oil. This one's by Young Living, the best one on the planet. Please let me know if you would have any more questions about Young Living essential oils. I'm basically a distributor. Uh, my wife is a distributor, but I am passionate about them as well ever since I discovered they actually work. So that is absolutely amazing. It's not something that just smells good. It's something that has real therapeutic benefits. So our first sponsor unofficial is Young Living. Thank you so much, because I just put peppermint all over my head, and that's gonna make my, um, my headache better. And right now it's making my eyes go, ooh, it's fresh. I feel very minty. Okay, we're going to greet whatever kid just got up and is in the house behind me. Did I test all my slides? Yes, I did. Um, got my notes here. Got my coffee cup ready. So I can tell you that our sponsor is Employee Escape Plan. EmployeeEscapePlan.com Big shout out to Joe Nicasio for my mug and for becoming a sponsor of our show, EmployeeEscapePlan.com. Talk more about that in a few minutes. All right, here we go. Now my coffee is peppermint coffee. Delicious. The internet's a jungle. Roar!